Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am Developer Relations Engineer David Jones Gilardi, and today I want to show you a really cool email as an AI interface application and setup. So um, let's just go ahead and and set the stage here a little bit. Um, I I don't know about you, but I know for me, um, given that I am in this AI industry and everything, it's pretty easy sometimes to just assume that everybody has access to tools like ChatGPT and Perplexity on their phones or whatever. But that very well may not be the case, at least for people who are outside um, the industry and et cetera, who maybe aren't as aware or familiar with these types of technologies. So let's go ahead and take a look at a particular case just to kind of break down what's actually happening here. Okay, so we can see that I'm here in my email. Um, imagine for a moment, I'm gonna compose, I'm gonna say, send something to Lingflow at email-agent.ai. I'll talk about some of the details of this here in a moment. And the latest, I'm just gonna put something like latest, latest research. Now here I can just go ahead and said send. And what's gonna happen is now this is gonna go to, um, this is gonna go to a service that actually is powered underneath the hood by Langflow, um, where it is kicking off an agentic flow. It's gonna answer this question. And you can see behind me right here, um, there's actually a set of these I just did. Um, one I asked about what's the latest information for NVIDIA's financial performance. Um, another one here, I was, you know, I live in Orlando, Florida, so I was asking about top cocktail bars, um, even giving me some maps and everything like that, right? So I've got this Google Map integration and such going, right? So notice though, at no point do I need to sign up, do I need a key or anything like that. Um, this could also come into play for somebody who, say, within their own company, you have certain business domain knowledge um, that is in your agentic flows, and you want to be able to expose that where someone could just have a conversation on the go, again, without having to have any external tools. And then lastly, I'll say that email, as an AI interface, actually works really well. And one of the big reasons why is email is asynchronous. Like, if you think about it, a lot of agentic flows, depending on you know, how complex they are and what they're working on, they could take many minutes to respond. And when you're in a normal application, that could feel like forever. But when you're doing things from an email perspective, that's actually quite natural. Okay, so you get the basic idea and you can see how this is going on. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at what's going on under the hood. So on the left hand side here, we have this webhook handler code. This is the part that is handling um, the incoming requests. So um, when the email pops in, um, and it gets forwarded down to a webhook. This webhook is responsible for essentially cleaning everything up uh, before I send it on to Langflow. On the right-hand side, I'm using Ngrok. So if you're not familiar with Ngrok, uh, it is a wonderful tool. I use it for development all of the time. Because if you think about it, when I'm working with addresses that are on my local machine, like I am here, like localhost it port 8000, that's not exposed to the internet, right? I can't get to that address. So what an ingrock allows me to do is it will create a bridge between my local environment and the internet. Um, and you can see that address there. Now, why is that important? Well, because in this particular setup, um, when I send an email to a particular address, like you saw me send one to langflow at uh, email-agent.ai, well, in order for that to get to my agent, I need some way to not only accept that email, but then route it somewhere. And that's where Twilio SendGrid comes in. So I'm using Twilio SendGrid for this, for both my incoming emails and handling the routing to my webhook, but then also the outgoing emails. And I'll show you that here in a moment. So if we take a look at Twilio SendGrid, you can see that I have these domains that I bought, by the way. So I bought email-agent.ai. So in Twilio SendGrid, I can set up my inbound pars configuration, which essentially says, hey, when I get an email at one of these particular domains, I want you to then forward that email onto the address that I tell you. Notice this one here, right? And if you take a look at my ngrok, you'll see that these match, right? So if I send something to dev.email-agent.ai, right, it will be forwarded onto that address slash webhook. If you look at my ngrok configuration, you can see I have that address and that then is forwarding that to my localhost 8000 slash webhook. So what is that actually doing? Well, my, my webhook is running here at port 8000 locally. And if you take a look, I have one route coming in here. Ah, there it is, webhook. So when I put, when that says slash webhook over here, right, this slash webhook, it's going to get routed to my code here. So you can see when we call webhook, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pull information, you know, about the to the sender, the subject, the text, the headers, all sorts of information from the email. 
But the rest of the stuff, and you'll see like functions like this clean text and everything, are really just me going through, cleaning everything up, pulling out just the various bits that I'm looking for. That's the main function of this particular webhook, right? Um, and then at the end of the day, once I've done all that cleaning, you, you know, I'm going to scroll down past a bunch of stuff. Um, right here, this is really what I'm after, right? Here, this URL, for those of you who are familiar with Langflow, you'll recognize this. Um, that is the URL to my Langflow flow, my endpoint, right? So this is the part where I'm going to take all the information that I've now cleaned. I'm going to forward that on to my Agentic AI workflow in Langflow in this particular case. And then it's the thing that's going to do all the major processing and answering the questions and then sending the return email. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching our video. If you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button below so you can be notified anytime we're uploading something new. We also would love your feedback. Let us know what video ideas you have. Okay, let's get back to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at that actually. So here is in fact the flow. Um, so what I've done here is I've taken pretty much a basic agentic flow. Uh, that's where you see this chat input. I'm gonna have a conversation. I'm going to have an agent. And so you have this basic agentic flow here where I've got my chat input, my agent, and my output. You can see we actually have two other sections, right? We have one that's handling the email. So this is handling the send email portion. So where I'm using Twilio SendGrid to accept emails and, and handle incoming emails, um, I'm also using Twilio SendGrid to then send out my response emails as well. And then over here, you see a bunch of tools. Now, this is something that's actually quite interesting about the way that this works. And, and it's something that I would highly recommend in agentic flows when you are getting more complex flows. Um, it's really better to have an agent that is dedicated to do organizing tasks and everything like that. That's exactly what this task agent is doing um, that specializes in it's just handling the task management. It's choosing the right tool for the job and handling the task management. As a matter of fact, if you were to take a look at the instructions here, you'll see that its instructions are specific to managing tasks and you know sending the email and such like that. Um, all the underlying details, um, like how the send emails or how the emails are sent, um, and the details of each of the underlying agents are within those agents themselves. So this really helps you know, like separate the concerns, better for troubleshooting, and ensures you don't overload your task agent with too much specific details because sometimes the models can get confused, right? So it's better to let it do what it's good at, which is handling the tasks. So just make sure that you have very uh, descriptive names and descriptions for the underlying agents. Um, and then they'll, the, the main uh, organizing agent will be able to pick those just fine. Okay, so let's take a step back a little bit. So what actually happens when an email comes in and it gets here into the chat input. And if we take a look at one of the examples, I'll just pull one of these out here uh, so you can see it real quick, okay? So this would be like what an email might look like, right? You know, just a very basic payload where I've got like a to, a sender, a subject, the text, so on and so forth, right? Um, and what's gonna happen here is that's gonna come in through my chat input. This is what happens when the webhook is called. It's gonna forward that information on that cleaned payload that I was talking about. Then you see two lines here, right? I got one going directly to the agent itself that's actually going to take that payload and give it to the agent so it can work with it. But the other one comes up here where it is pulling out the email address of the sender. And that's actually important. I, I could actually say do that in the webhook if I wanted to. Um, but sometimes, you know, email structure and stuff, it's not always identically, you know, coming out in the same exact order and all that. So I found that it made sense in this case to use the structured output component uh, to pull out just that email address for me. Um, so its job is to get that return email address, and then I'm injecting it directly into the prompt using this sender email. So that way I know anytime an email is being sent, um, it's going to pull the sender information. It's going to respond only to that sender, right? That part is uh, pretty important. Now, notice that we also have a separate email agent. So Langflow does have the ability to make sub-agents. You can just put them in tool mode, and I can use them as tool off of the major agent. Now, what's important here, though, is, again, noticing that I have an email agent with its own instructions. And why that's important is these instructions are specific to being an email assistant that can send emails and very specific to that task, right? Um, that way, 
I don't try to I don't try to burden the task agent with those details. That's what the email agent is for. Now, finally, here in this section here, you'll see I have this send email component. This is not a component that's just available in uh, Langflow. This is actually something that I created as a custom component. Now, with my SendGrid API key, I can actually send email back out through SendGrid. Um, so I'm being able to use, use that both on the in and the out uh, from the email uh, portion. Okay, so then finally over here, you'll notice we have a set of agentic tools. Um, so these are all pointing to underlying flows. Let's take a look at these. You'll notice there that there are a whole set of other flows separate from just my email agent interface. This is the main one that we were just looking at a second ago. So if we take a look at these, you can see that on their own, they're actually pretty complex, right? This one actually has three different agents in it for the travel agent. Um, it does a tablet search. It's got the ability to use um, Google Maps. Um, you know, it, so there's a lot that's going on, let's say, just in this one. And again, this agent, this agentic flow, specializes in doing planning and travel and, and such like that. Uh, you'll see that I have some others. I've got a financial agent. Same thing with the research one. There are individual agentic flows that specialize in doing one thing and doing one thing very well. And then I can just wire those up. Now, what this does for me is actually quite cool because once we have this whole end-to-end -end capability wired up, if I want to now add more capability to my agent here, I don't have to touch one piece of code. Right. All I have to do is I can come in here, I can create another agentic flow, or maybe maybe it was even a case where I have like MCP, I can do it that way or whatever. Um, I can just wire these tools in to my task agent. Um, and again, as long as I'm not making the mistake of trying to make my task agent do too much and giving it underlying details of these, this should work really well. So if there was some other capability that you needed, you could just bring in another flow, wire it up, your users via email will just get this new capability. Let's just do a local test so you can kind of see what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick this off. Uh, if we take a look at my playground, right, I'm empty. I don't have anything going on there. Now, one thing that's actually super important that I should point out here is that in the payload going to Langflow, right, you'll notice this session ID. I talk about this in other videos that I've made. Um, this one's really important. And look what's in the session ID, the data sender, the sender. So what this will do is this will automatically set a session within Langflow that differentiates and compartmentalizes conversations per email. Why is this important? Well, and especially in a case like this, I don't want all of my user emails being melded into one session, right? Because then my agent will probably get confused. It'll think it'll have a history of a conversation that's from somebody else. Not only that, if I had something sensitive, I kind of want those separated out, right? Um, so I use this session ID all the time. This ended up being a really great way to use this. So I just add that into my payload, send that over to Langflow, and then watch what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and hit a set of test emails. I've got four different um, tests set up uh, there. Yeah, one is like the Nintendo one, one is a cocktail one, one is a financial one, one's a research one, right? Now you, you saw things happening here. You can see this was kicking off. So what's happening is I send these emails to dev.email-agent.ai. Well, if you remember, we have this set up here. So send uh, Twilio SendGrid is gonna send that off to my webhook, right? Um, and then you can see that kicking. Um, so if I come back over here, we should see a set of emails. Not only that, if I expose the um, uh, the logs from my local Langflow, you can see it's it's chunking on all the stuff, right? It's processing all of these things. Uh, so if we take a look at each of these individually, uh, if we take a look at the travel one here, right? You can see that again, based off of my question, you know, let's plan a fun cocktail dinner in Orlando. Um, it was able to determine that it went to the travel one, right? And let's see. Yeah, here's my map, right? You can see that it's, it's giving me a map to the location, everything like that. Um, same thing for the other ones here, financial. Uh, so it's giving me, I think, NVIDIA financials. Uh, and then the research one did this all this research on a, on a fun question, right? And again, you can see where those session IDs come into play, right? These are just the email addresses. So it makes sure that I have this nice compartmentalized conversations. And then finally, um, all of this, that, that email webhook handler and everything, it's all here in um, my GitHub repository for email agent interface. Um, there's some instructions and everything, and I'll show you how to get it going. So I encourage everybody to go try it out. Just send an email to langflow at email-agent.ai. 
ask it a question, maybe try to plan a trip. I would love your feedback and know how it goes for you. And as usual, if you enjoy our content and would like to see more, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave some feedback. You never know how your comments might influence future videos. With that, everybody, as usual, thank you for watching. Happy coding.